Meet the hate monger, the architect behind Donald Trump's white supremacist policies. So I spent a good chunk of this weekend with an absolutely extraordinary book. Uh, it is titled Hate Monger. The subtitle, Stephen Miller, Donald Trump, and the White Nationalist Agenda. And uh, just dog-earing pages and marking stuff. It just blew my mind. I, I, this, if you want to understand Donald Trump, you have to understand Stephen Miller. And if you want to understand Stephen Miller, you need to read this book. G uh, Gene Guerrero wrote it. Uh, the, uh, as I said, the title is Hate Monger. Stephen Miller, Donald Trump, and the White Nationalist Agenda. Her website is uh, Jean Guerrero, J-E-A-N-G-U-E-R-R-E-R-O dot com. And her Twitter handle is Jean, J-E-A-N-G-U-E-R-R-E. -E -E. uh, Jean, welcome to the program. You have written a masterpiece. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, I used to deb debate David Horowitz on this program, and I gave up on it four or five years ago because he would just inject, uh, sometimes even outside the context of the debate, you know, these just insanely hateful statements that that I was left with, you know, b almost no response to. You know, really? I mean, you know, how, how do you how do you rebut some of these things? Um, you know, uh, radical Muslims want to come and burn your house down and rape your wife. Um, okay. Uh, not that he literally said that in, in exactly that way, but I mean, th that sort of shocking stuff. I was astonished to see that he was the guy, he kind of brought Stephen Miller into his own. Tell me about that. Exactly. I mean, he became almost like a father figure to Stephen Miller when Stephen Miller was a teenager. He was, Stephen Miller was going through a hard time. His family had had to move from a very affluent part of Santa Monica to a less affluent part. And, you know, Stephen Miller had to go to a very diverse public high school instead of a private high school the way that his younger brother later would. So he was feeling, you know, displaced. He was feeling angry. He was feeling lost. And this is when David Horowitz comes into his life and essentially introduces him to this fantasy that the United States faces certain destruction in the form of the Democratic part Party partnering with Muslims and other, quote unquote, enemies of America who always happen to be people of color. And so, you know, he starts to invite well, Stephen Miller invites him to speak at his high school. David Horowitz starts to invite him to come to his house. They share ideas. And according to the private correspondence that I obtained for the book, David Horowitz played an instrumental role in Stephen Miller's career. I mean, he got him his first jobs in Congress. He directly shaped Trump's rhetoric and policies through Stephen Miller, including some of the most incendiary rhetoric, you know, describing inner cities as war zones or talking about radical Islam. This is a man, David Horowitz, as you know, you know, he, he's a man who, who says that the only real racism in society is racism against white men and that, you know, people of color should be grateful to, to white men. And he insists that he is not a racist, but he essentially taught Stephen Miller how to launder racist ideas and white supremacist ideas through the language of heritage and the language of economics and the language of national security in order to make it palatable to the mainstream, which is what you see, you know, him doing in the White House. Yeah. And, and both of them are Jewish, which, you know, a, a group that is has typically been on the receiving end of racism, um, which makes it all the more, frankly, for me, confounding. Um, tell us about Katie McHugh. Katie McHugh is an editor at the right wing blog Breitbart who, while she was working there in her early 20s, was told that Stephen Miller, who at the time was communications director for Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, she was told that Stephen Miller would be shaping her coverage for Breitbart. And he starts to pump her with white nationalist and white supremacist literature and articles that he encourages her to, to write stories about. Uh, particularly a website called American Renaissance, which is a white supremacist website that publishes misleading uh, and f completely false crime statistics, painting black and brown people as innately more violent than white people, which is a common recruiting strategy uh, among white supremacists. And so he was pumping Katie McHugh with these articles, and she began to, you know, really become radicalized in white supremacist ideas. 
she eventually leaves Breitbart and, and abandons the white supremacist movement when she realizes how violent and how dangerous it is. And she shares her emails with the Southern Poverty Law Center. And this is how people have been able to connect the dots in large part between what Stephen Miller is doing and the white nationalist and white supremacist literature that he's consulting and pulling ideas from. I mean, in my reporting for the book, it's clear that his immigration policies come directly from think tanks that were funded by eugenicists who believe in population control for non-white people because they believe in the genetic superiority of whites. But Katie McHugh, I mean, she was radicalized at a very young age by Stephen Miller and eventually clawed her way out of that movement and, and tried to, you know, atone for her actions by sharing her emails with Stephen Miller with the public. So Donald Trump comes along. He's got a history of, uh, you know, his father was a racist. His father was arrested at a Klan rally in New York. Um, when he was a young man, he, he, uh, when, when he was working for his dad, whenever black people would apply for, uh, you know, entrance into, uh, to, to rent one of Donald, uh, Fred Trump's properties, uh, Donald would write the letter C for colored on the application, which would mean that they would never be considered for, for the rental. And, 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 and he was sued by the federal government, in fact, for this and, and uh, you know, did not win that lawsuit, although he did not admit guilt. And so we've got a guy, you know, with racist proclivities uh, calling for the death of the Central Park Five, all this sort of thing. Uh, you know, innocent people of color who were charged with, with uh, beating and raping a woman. Um, and he meets Stephen Miller. Does Stephen Miller turn up the volume for Trump? Does he change his worldview? Does he solidify it? Does he anchor it? We have about uh, about th- uh, you know about three minutes here left. Uh, 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 two minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jean. Yeah, I mean Stephen Miller because he is an ideologue and an extremist. He and he has this incredible work ethic that Donald Trump does not have. I mean Donald Trump is primarily motivated by self interest, and Stephen Miller actually believes. I mean he's he's a fanatic. He believes that he is somehow saving the United States by systematically harming communities of color. And so he stays up late into the night. You know, he, he, he has this incredible discipline and work ethic that nobody else in the White House has because of his extremism. So Stephen Miller, you know, ha- has, has, has brought these, uh, this, these ideas to the White House that, that Trump, you know, he had this emotional racism already, but Stephen Miller showed him how to systematically harm communities of color, you know, slashing refugee admissions to record lows, completely obliterating the asylum system at the U.S.-Mexico border, uh, restricting green card access. All of these policies are, are things that Trump would not have thought of on his own. I mean, his only real immigration p- proposal before Miller joined was the border wall. And immigration restriction has kind of rolled their eyes at that. They knew that we've had, you know, hundreds of barriers along the border and they've done very little to actually stop immigration flows. And it wasn't until Miller started pulling policies from these think tanks funded by white supremacists that, you know, people started to realize that the Trump administration would mean a real decrease in overall immigration flows, primarily targeting families, families from Latin America, families from Africa, in most cases, who have broken no laws, because this is not about national security for Stephen Miller. This is about re-engineering the demographic flows of people into this country to keep brown and black families out.